Well, hey folks, it's uh, Rob Daywald again, and we're doing a little uh, lesson on uh, uh, Lesson 9, Prison Life. I've got my private email up there if you need to reach me. Uh, and so uh, we're in corrections class. We're going to talk a little bit about prison life. So prison life, uh, the thing about this that we need to understand right away is that when we're talking prison life, we're primarily talking about uh, inmates and inmate codes and there's a female inmate code and subcultures and argot which is a language uh, and a number of these things but keep in mind I mean we have a lot of people that come in these classes and say well we need, we need to make it nasty and tough and dirty and rotten well the problem is corrections officers psychologists wardens all these other people have to work in there too so if you want to be in a foul stinking environment all day uh, you know, that's dirtiest jobs in America on TV. And that's just not fair or appropriate for employees to have to put up with it any more than inmates. But I understand there's a culture out there in this country that we want to get even for some reason with people that commit crimes. It's, it is human nature to think that way, but it is counterproductive. It costs too much, it achieves, achieves nothing, uh, and the people just rotate around and come right back in. You warehouse them in there, you treat them bad, they go out, they're worse criminals when they go out than when they come in, and sure enough, within three years, they're right back again. Some of the other things we've talked about in community corrections that I'm really in favor of are alternatives. We'll get into them more later, but let's just work our way through this whole thing of this uh, prison culture and prison subculture. Uh, okay, so uh, trying to cut this a little shorter because I've been told that my lectures are running too long uh, and so uh, they have what they call their own language as we said. They also have what they call a uh, sub rosa economy, um, you know, it's an underground economy or under the table economy. Uh, men's prison groups generally uh, for many years there have been gangs in America. It started early after the Irish began to uh, immigrate to the United States and so now it's, it's a full-blown problem in a lot of Americans prisons. The problem that you get into is that it runs down racial lines almost exactly. Uh, there are black gangs, there are Hispanic gangs, and there are white gangs and most of your white gangs are the skinhead gangs and they just all hate each other because of their different racial background. So it's very sad but true. Uh, the Caucasian gangs like we mentioned a lot of them are called skinheads. Uh, there are a few other types of uh, white gangs but that's the biggest number of uh, gangs tend to be some form of a skinhead gang. Now in the old days it was a mafia type gang. Mafia is different than other gangs because organized crime is really more about making money. So they only resort to violence when they have to if someone is interfering with the ability to make money. Gangs on the other hand, generally speaking, are all about turf. Uh, they want to own that whole prison just to prove they're the toughest, they're the meanest. So basically when you get into a lot of your gang uh, conduct, uh, gangs as opposed to organized crime, very different. Uh, African American gangs, there are several, but they tend to uh, give each other a wide berth in, in prison. They don't bother each other unless it's uh, absolutely essential. Their primary problem obviously is with the skinhead gangs uh, which are white. Uh, this would be like a clan oriented or even worse if you can believe it uh, where they believe in kind of like the skinheads generally go back to like Viking lore. Uh, we have a gang like this near my home it's called Vinlander Gang. You can just Google on Vinlander. Uh, they've got headquarters in Knightstown, Indiana. So basically uh, the, obviously the African American gangs uh, don't like the uh, skinhead gangs. Uh, there are other forms of white gangs obviously but uh, this is one of the primary ones. The uh, original Klan type gangs were considered by some to be too mild for some of these guys that want to be in gangs. So 
Um, you get into security threats to the overall uh, mission of the prison. Sometimes, since this is a power struggle, things like prison rape and so forth tie in with uh, gangs. If you choose not to join a gang, uh, you could be raped. They say that they will, and excuse me, but this is what they say, they will make you their bitch, which is to say, like female dog, uh, that they've got to go around and do little errands and all this other stuff, and whenever the guy feels like it, oh, by the way, he's going to rape you. Uh, and so the other thing is that there are issues with uh, diseases. For example, it's been brought up already that AIDS, HIV are more prevalent, probably twice as prevalent in the prisons in the United States. And it's transmitted through this type of behavior. Uh, AIDS uh, afflicted uh, gang member uh, has uh, anal intercourse with a um, another male prisoner and uh, infects him with AIDS and, and that happens a lot. Uh, renouncing gang membership. I had a case where I've talked about before in a Miami Correctional Facility where a young man was actually attacked by a Hispanic gang because he was Hispanic and he refused to join a gang. So they broke, they broke both of the bones and both of his calves of his left and right leg and just left him. And then the prison did a very poor job of giving meeting his medical needs when he was trying to do the right thing. So it's a, it's a bad situation. Well, uh, women's prisons are way different than men's prisons. They actually have what they call play families where the older lady in, let's say, a dorm or in a housing unit, maybe three, four people, is considered the mother, and then the other girls are like her daughters and so they just work things out as a family unit. Uh, it's very good, uh, uh, really it's not an, a bad, it's more productive type situation. They have a lot of friendships. Of course there's also people who choose to be lesbians in that situation uh, and it's not usually as a forced or rape type situation, usually. Now where there is a uh, uh, a problem with sex in the prisons is that there are of course gay men that end up in prison and they find a gay partner and it is consensual. Here again though these AIDS and uh, STDs and other kinds of things can be uh, transmitted so it's a, it's, a, it's a big problem. Now consensual sex in women's prison are a little bit different. You do have lesbian relationships but uh, one of the problems to get into there and this comes up in that film series on Netflix, Orange is the New Black, is sometimes the women prisoners try to use their sexuality to get advantages in terms of food, uh, even drugs, uh, and other things. Or they can use sexuality to uh, get prison guards in trouble. So they can act like, well, uh, this is voluntary sex, I'm consenting to have sex with this guard, when they hate the guard, as soon as it's over, they don't clean up or anything. They run to the warden and say, he raped me, and they have uh, DNA to prove it. Other times, they just use it as a blackmail card where they say, okay, uh, now I'm pregnant. It's your baby, and so you're going to have to uh, take care of me in and outside of prison, or I'll get you uh, not only fired, but uh, you'll end up being charged with a felony. Uh, is the way they talk to the guard. So it can be a very touch and go situation. It's very tempting for guards. There are some attractive women in prison, of course, and uh, so that's a major, major problem. Uh, race and ethnicity uh, in the prisons, uh, the much integration that goes on. Uh, obviously, the prison staff do not really recognize, uh, generally speaking, any kind of a difference on. Uh, the races and sometimes this can explode uh, in, in violence. So a uh, good question that comes up is to avoid violence uh, do conjugal visits reduce violence? And that's a good question that you could research and submit your discussion board on is uh, what do you think? What, you know what conjugal visits are which is that you can visit with your girlfriend, your wife, 
uh, and uh, uh, or your uh, significant other, whether it's a man or a woman, uh, and uh, th this makes you more mellow. And you know, you've been able to have a visit where you have kind of like a special room within the prison where you can have uh, intimate relations with your uh, loved one. Uh, also, um, the biggest thing on sexual assault. Uh, in the men's prison, like I say, it's a power struggle. They want to get control over somebody. In the women's prison, on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it's more in the, in the area of either uh, lesbianism or it's where the guards attack uh, some of the women, especially smaller women that are unable to defend themselves at all. So there could be a lot of different levels of this. Uh, and so the big thing is that uh, there has been much violence at times. We have reduced the violence. I think a lot of that reduction in violence has to do with better management uh, programs. As much as everybody says, well, I want to get even or whatever, and why do they have TVs? You know, these are earned privileges that people can have, and if they misbehave, they take away their TV. So you have to have... Uh, kind of a behavior modification approach where you give them positive reinforcement like television and then if they behave badly you take it away. So it's almost like raising a child uh, if you think of it uh, like that. The bad thing about some of the prison riots that we've seen over time, Attica, New Mexico, Colorado and Lucasville, Ohio are some examples. You could uh, look those up if you wanted to focus in on uh, prison violence uh, a lot of times there was some small thing that really caused it to jump off. We recently, in 2007, had a prison riot in Newcastle, Indiana, which is in uh, my area, my reach, where I teach down there sometimes. Uh, and a lot of it was uh, people were brought in from Arizona to a private prison against their will. You might want to just view the corrections officer interview that I did that kind of touches on that. So a number of good things here. Check it all out and uh, report back in your discussion board on things that you've come up with. Thanks for watching. Be back in just a few with another video. Thank you.